All right, we're live, folks. Welcome. My name is Michael Huggins, and we're having another edition of our Meetup on Zoom. It's our Zoom Up, and I am joined today by my co-host out of Denver, Boulder area, Colorado. What's up, Mike? What's up? How you doing, Michael? Good. Glad What's you're up, here. What's up, everybody else? Yeah, so we got an amazing story today. We still got a bunch of people coming in here live. Um, and the whole idea behind why we're bringing you these video series is so that you can see stories of transformation from our community. Maybe you've looked at something, uh, or maybe this is one of your first videos or recordings, but we want to show you that we have a system, a proven system with thousands of students going through it, getting results. And they have a similar background like you. You're able to do this too, if only you were to get educated and link arms with the right people. We've been doing this for 10 years. Uh, I actually got involved back 10 years ago for myself and I started doing short sales and fix and flips and my first deal I made more money than my entire yearly income and um, and it's been amazing I know Mike my co-host today uh, he was financially off the grid he didn't exist uh, it, he, he was a ghost so to speak but now he's able to he's got short-term rentals uh, all over the city that he's working in uh, he's built up his his personal credit his business credit He's built up a family bank, in fact, uh, and, uh, and you got to check out the interview that I have on him already. Uh, but today, we got an amazing guest. But before we get into our guest, Mike, um, what do our guests need to do after this? Yeah, so after you hear the story today, you guys, we'd like you to hop on, uh, get back with the person that invited you here and hop on the intro. We, uh, we do a Pillars of Wealth presentation workshop that's super informative help you get some more vision because you guys know that real estate is risky. You know, you can, um, there's, there's no limit to the money you can make in real estate, but there's no floor either. So we want to plug you in with tools, resources, community, all the, all the knowledge that you'll need to go out there and be successful in real estate. And we'll also be having a house tour. Uh, we Tyson actually helps with um, the tech and getting the house tours together so that we can, have those available for people online and then this saturday from 8 to 4 8 a.m to 4 p.m mountain standard time we are going to be doing a intensive uh of raising capital raising private and hard money intensive with whitney stark she's a phenomenal woman that uh mega inspiring she's she's raised millions of dollars and she does it morally eagerly uh morally legally ethically she's going to be dropping some gems so i'm, I'm excited to be there myself uh, we'll see you all there remember get back with the person that invites you here and uh michael i'm gonna give it back to you okay perfect so folks stay plugged in this is just the beginning process there are a ton more videos that you're going to want to see and a ton of value that we can add if you show up you link arms with us and you're serious about making that change so now as we transition, our guest today has just blown the doors off of what he thought he was going to be able to do inside the first six months, first year. Um, I'm not exactly sure how long he's been involved, but he's, he's quickly rose through the ranks and been able to support a lot of people. Everyone knows who he is nationwide now because of his contributions to our community. Uh, but he wasn't always this popular or successful in his business. So I'm going to have him share where he came from where he's going, why he decided to get linked up with us. Everyone help me welcome to the stage, Mr. Tyson Clay. Hey, thank you very much, Michael. I am so excited I get to share my story today. And to be honest, I didn't know I would get to share my story with people. Um, and I've always enjoyed being around people like you, like Mike, White, everybody else in, in the community who have been there to support me since day one. And you know, as I was starting off, I was, I was kind of wondering as I was about to, to get involved in, in this community, am I, are they just gonna say, all right, you're an investor now, good luck, goodbye. But no, I realized right away as I, as I started down that, that train of thought that I would be surrounded by people who are more successful than me constantly. And I, one of my favorite quotes is it says, you become the average of the five people you spend the most time around. Jim Rohn. Yeah. Right, Michael? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so I believe that so strongly. And so I've, I've, I've been intentional about engineering um, my time 
with who I spend it with. And I've also been intentional about spending less time with people who would drag me down. But anyways, enough about, enough about that. That's all good stuff. But so before I found this, I didn't even know I was invested. I, I was interested in investing in real estate. Um, I've, I was raised in a family that was always lacking in money. Let's just put it that way. And so I learned from my parents that the way life goes is you go to work in the morning, then you come home and you do that every single day. And that's just how life is going to end. So I didn't ever look beyond that. Um, I was taught, in fact, from the time that I was really little, that I need to go to school and get good grades so I can go to college and get a good job. I'm sure a lot of you people can relate to that. But mm -hmm. that's how I was raised. And so even when I and, and, and I didn't have... Um, mentors for careers, for personal development as I was growing up. And so that's really all I knew. And as I was graduating college, I still, I, I still didn't know what I wanted to do for a career. So even on graduation day, people were asking me, so Tyson, what, well, you have this degree in exercise science and nutrition, two bachelor's degrees, what are you going to do with it? And I told them, I have no idea. <laughs> I, I, so you have two master's degrees? Bachelor's with a B. B. Oh, two bachelor's degrees. I'm not sure how to make a B with my fingers. Bachelor's B degree. In, in sign language. Anyway, all right. Go. <laughs> okay, so you got two bachelor's and you still didn't know what you wanted to do. Exactly. Okay. I was figuring if one bachelor's degree is good, why not go for two? I was so close to the second one and just finished it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you graduate, people are asking you, and what did you pick? I picked, I don't know. I need to figure it out. <laughs> I didn't have enough guidance <laughs> during college from anybody or before college to know I need to pick something. I need to pick something before I graduate so I can know which direction I'm going to go. I was just a lost soul. Wow. Okay. That's a lot of folks coming out of college. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Unfortunately. I mean, if I can go back, I would skip college and work because that's really how I discovered what I don't like. And that's how <laughs> I discovered this. <laughs> right on. So yeah, tell us, tell us what, what was your occupation right before you uh, quit that? Well, b between college and that occupation, I bounced around to all kinds of jobs, metal yard, a bakery, um, a healthcare facility, activities director. I was all over the board, right? All over the board. And then my cousin, when, no, my cousin, my brother-in-law and my cousin are both teachers. They suggested, hey, Tice, you know a lot about science and you enjoy your time when you're with when you're with kids you like adding value to them so why don't you try being a teacher science teacher and i'm like okay so i got my teaching license took me about two months and i became a sixth grade science teacher i lasted one month <laughs> just one sorry to laugh <laughs> <laughs> okay so what do you mean you only lasted a month the kids ate you up or what Oh, one semester. Did I say month? Yeah. One semester. The kids did eat me up. I lacked all the, all the skills for managing their behaviors. I lacked all the teaching skills. I was, promised, I was promised a mentor teacher, someone who would come in and spend time with me after school, plan lessons, um, model appropriate skills that I need to learn. She never came in. I was just thrown to the wolves, basically. You're a little... 12 year old yeah. wolves. <laughs> yeah. And so at that point in my life, um, a salary of $42,000 per year, that was like, oh yeah, that's, that sounds nice to me coming from making a maximum of, I don't know, 17,000 a year before that. Yeah. But by the time I got to the end of that semester, I was like, I don't care. I am done. I don't care how much I am poor, how much I'm suffering due to lack of money. I am so done with this school teacher thing. Wow. And about the <laughs> Let's see. In November, while I was a teacher, I was supposed to be in Canada at my brother's wedding. Couldn't find my passport, had the plane tickets, had the, the days off work. And I was so I was just home alone, feeling miserable, wallowing in my misery of being a teacher. Man. And I saw 
I was like, so what do people do when they're, when they're wallowing in misery, they get on Facebook, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so I saw this post from, from Tani Shaw. She, she is my friend. I met her on Tinder. Never met her, never talked to her after that, but we were Facebook friends. Her post said, Hey, I just made a bunch of money. I owned a property for one month and then I sold it and made all this money. And I didn't put any of my own money into it. Zero dollars out of pocket. So I was like, teach me more, send. Nice. And uh, she invited me to learn more about it. She introduced me to people who have taught her. She introduced me to instructors that she had and the education that she has access to, which is now the education that I have access to. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, mm -hmm, I'm doing this. Nice. That's it. Okay, so that was November of 2019? That was December 2018. Oh, December 2018. Okay, so you've been a part of our community for two years now. Two years, yep. Excellent. Okay, and so how long uh, did it take for you from when you started to getting into your first deal? That took about, about eight months. Eight months. I decided to spend an hour every day on this, my brain. You know, getting more knowledge, practicing skills, never there are action steps I could find in, in, in the education, plugging into the community of investors and entrepreneurs and business owners that, that we have, and figuring out how I can add value whenever I was around them. Okay, so tell us about your, your first deal then. How did you find it? What was it? And how much did you make? Okay, my first deal was actually a modular home. And I found it by a wholesaler. A wholesaler is, is somebody who, who is, a, is an acquisition expert for real estate. And he found it, told me, and I said, no. And because I had been learning how to analyze deals from the education, I looked at it and said, no, I'm sorry, that's not going to work. But I can offer this much money because we are investors, right? We make offers. Right. So I offer this much. And he said, no, my, my seller can't go down that far. And I'm like, okay, well, then good luck with that. He came back to me says no one else wanted it <laughs> with the price that I offered and said, okay, hey, I, I convinced her to go down to the price that you were offering. Do you still want it? I nice. said, yeah. So I did that deal. It took about three months. I made $20,000. It was, it was a uh, yeah. longer than three months to sell because modular homes are harder to sell than real estate. You go to the DMV for those ones. It's kind of weird. Anyways, different story. But yes, I made twenty thousand dollars, and the project took three months. Nice, man. So basically, your your um, the job you said you made you were making like seventeen thousand before you became a teacher. Yeah. And so you basically replaced that income in a quarter of the time. That's what I'm hearing. That is what I'm saying, okay. and it was glorious. <laughs> nice. Way cool. And what um, other deals have you done, Tyson, since then? All right, I've done a deal in the avenues of Salt Lake City. It's on, an so Salt Lake City has different areas. It's a pretty big place. The avenues is a popular area and houses go, houses are from the 1800s. Yeah, Gustav is doing this, he's right. So the J Street was a fix and flip. We made 60,000 on that one. That project took five months. Um, most recently, we did a project. I love how casually he just says it. I just made like <laughs> 60 grand on that one. <laughs> In fact, Sorry, I have a quick, a quick comment about your comment, Michael. When I was, get, was, was thinking about doing all this, I had a mindset shift. Like, for example, $10,000 in real estate isn't that much money. And I also learned one of the first things that that we have different currencies, right? right. Our most valuable currency is our time. Second is our knowledge. Third is our relationships. Fourth is our credit. I like to take it a step up and say credibility. And fifth is our money. Money to me is the least valuable. Anyways, that's, that's what I wanted to say. Yeah, right. So you're like, you're more impressed with the relationships that you're forging and the knowledge you're gaining than necessarily the money you're earning. Absolutely. Okay, that's the mindset shift, folks. Take a note of that. What's cool. in the back okay. there, Tyson? I see there's something in the back. Oh, that is screen. my vision board. 
Okay. That helped with the mindset shift, huh? It does. Every day, every day I sit on my bed, which is below the screen, and I stare at that vision board for about five minutes, and I imagine myself, how it feels to have things on my vision board. I imagine what I will do with it. I imagine how I will get there. I imagine myself enjoying the things on my vision board. And that really helps. That's a unique vision board. What? It's not really a board. <laughs> yeah, I actually got the idea from, from another member of the community. He, he, he showed a picture of his and I'm like, yeah, I like that. Cool. I'm doing that too. <laughs> How's it work though? It looks like it's, it's hanging up. There's stuff yeah, hanging so on it. How it works is, is I, I get a picture of something that, that I want to put on my vision board. And then I put a sticky note attached to that picture. And the sticky note says, I am so thankful I was able to purchase my Ford Raptor with an apartment complex. <laughs> on the wall. Right. And then I put date on the wall and then I put date accomplished blank. Okay. Yeah. So using, using strategies that we learned from the, from the education, my plan currently is to take the current fix and flip. It's called the jungle flip. It's up in Ogden, Utah. Profit for that one is projected to be $92,000 being conservative. And I'm going to take that profit and I'm going to trade it up into bigger and bigger things until I can buy a small apartment complex. And the, and the net cash flow from that apartment complex is going to pay for a Ford Raptor for me. I'm not going to buy the Ford Raptor. The apartment complex is going to buy the Ford Raptor. Nice. nice. Free Ford Raptor. <laughs> <laughs> so we're really playing the monopoly game in real life now <laughs> yes right we're taking Basically, our little yeah. greenhouses and getting those red hotels so to speak uh-huh awesome okay so um although you made that mental shift will you just describe what it was like when you very first closed and held that check that very first check what was that feeling for me it, it was it was well, first of all, it's not more happiness. I figured out how to be happy without money when I was younger. And that still is going to, that's going to continue until I die, I think. But so it's not more happiness. What it did give me though, is more security, more comfort. I'm, I, I knew right away that, okay, so this year, at least this year with this one check is taken care of. And so I don't need to worry about anything as long as I keep living a moderate life like I have been. Um, the second thing it did for me is it gave me confidence that I can go out and do it again. Yeah. Cool. So you've already accomplished two and you're on your third right now. Is it on the market? It is not on the market. There's, there's, um, Mike said in, in the beginning that the real estate is risky. This one has an issue with the Salt Lake Historic Society and they're holding us up. The house is up to code. The project's done, but they're holding us back. So we're working through that right now. This okay. is the jungle flip? No, the jungle flip isn't done oh. yet. Oh, okay. So you have two projects going on right now? I do, oh. yeah. Okay, right on. And, uh, and so you're, you're just playing this, this monopoly life, right? Don't, don't eat everything you earn, right? And you're saying you're trading it up, turning that profit into the next, into the next, until you, you basically have a, a cash flow lifestyle. Yes, talking about mindsets, Another, another huge mindset shift that I experienced, I was raised to have a very strong what's called employee mindset. Person, people with the employee mindset, when they get money, that's, that's like an extra sum of money, their first impulse is often to go spend it on something. I want to buy a truck. I want to buy a boat. <laughs> Don't buy a boat. <laughs> Don't buy a boat. Um, I want to buy something. I want to buy, I want to buy, add to my house or something. But then the opposite from that is, is, uh, abundance mindset, abundance mindset, or investor mindset. I don't know what you want to call it, but they take the ex this extra sum of money and they think, how can I make this grow? How can I keep it? How can I make this work for me? My money becomes my employee. So nice. that's what I am doing. Right on. And uh, how old are you? I'm 32. 32. Mm -hmm. So folks, I know some people are sitting there going, well, I don't know. I don't know. I already had this much money into college and these jobs and what are my friends and family going to think? And, and folks, you gotta, you gotta shake off all those excuses. Tyson is a great example of just embracing the process of change. I believe it was Albert Einstein that said the thinking that got you into your problem is insufficient to get you out of your problem. 
And so that's one thing that we do here is we teach you a new way of thinking to solve your problems. Tyson, you've been a great example of that. Thank you so much for being here and also your contributions to our community at large. Much appreciated. You're welcome. Definitely. Okay, cool. Now, uh, we do have a, a couple of bonus questions after the recording, uh, recording stops, Tyson. So hang around for one second. Um, now, folks, if you like that episode, go ahead and request from the person who got you here the playlist. We got, I believe this is episode 64 now. We got, we got a ton coming. So stay involved. And then three things. You want to come to an intro. Mike, did you come to an intro? I came to an intro. I came to an intro. Tyson, did you go to an intro? I did go to, to an intro. That was the first exposure I had to this. You guys weren't doing these little interviews before then. Uh -huh. So get on the intro, folks. And then we have house tours. Now you can watch the recordings or the live. We do uh, between our communities around the country, we do about 200 live house tours a year. So you want to come to one of those. You can see it firsthand what's going on. And then you want to come to the workshop, number three. We have one coming up tomorrow uh, for those of you who are here live or you get sent to recording today. Uh, but we do have very regular um, workshops. So attend those. Embrace this process. Link arms with us and go and chase your fears or chase your dreams and fight your fears. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So with that being said, uh, we're going to sign off for now. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you on the next one. Toodaloo. Bye. Thank you.